last time that was not soluble? No. It was? Oh yeah, it had something to do with chlorine. Lead bromide, remember? Lead bromide's not soluble, right? So, but what do we call those compounds that come together that are metal and non-metal? Ionic. 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 Uh, yeah, it's like ironic, but it's not. It's ionic. Okay? Metals and non-metals come together to form ionic compounds. Now, why do we call something ionic compounds? I know it sounds. Two ions come together. So, what? Why do we call them ionic, or why does two ion? ions come together to That's form right. a compound? Two ions come together. Now, how do those ions form in the first place? Um, I thought they were I atoms. Loose. They were atoms, and then the what happens? How do they form ions? They dissolve. No, they were atoms, but then what? How do you make an atom into an ion? How do you make an atom into make, an ion? You have to make sure it's getting what it wants. Where it wants. Okay, you either add or remove what? Electrons. Electrons, that's right. To make an atom an ion, you add or remove electrons. So, for example, if this is an iron atom, and I want to make it an iron ion, what should I do? Add a few electrons. Okay, I can add oh. electrons or I can... This one's one of the weird it. ones. This is one of the weird ones. It's a metal, so what did I say about metals? It always wants to lose. It always wants to lose. Metals always want to lose electrons, okay? So, if iron wants to lose electrons, let's say if it wants to lose two electrons... There is what number is iron? Uh, 26. If iron's number 26 and it wants to lose two electrons, then what would the iron, what would the iron ion look like if it wanted to lose two electrons? Well, it doesn't really want to lose two. Would it be noble if it lost two? Here's another secret that I'll teach, tell you right now. All metals that aren't in the first row are happy with losing two electrons almost always. Almost always. Now, it's hard to explain why that is right now, and maybe someday we'll get to it. But right now, uh, I'm just going to tell you that if iron is going to lose two electrons, what will the charge on the ion be? Plus couch. Two. This is the couch question. If iron is going to lose two electrons and form an ion, because that's what we decided, make an atom an ion, so this is the atom right here. Atoms don't have charges, right? But ions have charges. If I'm going to make this atom an iron, sorry, I'm going to make this atom an ion, right? What, and it's going to lose two electrons, what will the charge on the ion be? If it's going to lose two electrons. Positive what? Positive two. Positive two, correct? Because oh, yeah. it lost two electrons. Very good. And so we can draw a little. Uh, um, we can draw a little equation like this, where we say iron goes to an iron ion and let's go two electrons. See that little Whoa. thing like that? All right. That's one way to show that an atom is becoming an ion. All right. Now. Again, ionic compounds are often formed between metals and what? Non-metals. Non non the atoms come together. They're not ions yet, but a transfer of electrons occurs, and they become ions, and then they're stuck together. Okay? What's that? No, not stuck together forever. They can be pulled apart again. If somebody convinces them to give that electron back Right? You plug it into a battery or plug it into the wall. Put some stuff, put the, some salt, for example, into, plug it into the wall, put some wires coming out of the wall into the salt, and it'll make sodium and chlorine gas again. Because the wall is the moving of electrons, right? Electricity is the moving of electrons. 
electrons. One side's pulling electrons, one side's pushing electrons. So if you put wires into a uh, salt, for example, the salt will become, the salt is sodium, whoops, haze there, correct? Chloride, uh oh, is that right? No. 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 Okay. Chloride, sodium chloride, uh, ions and chlorine, uh, both ions, right? Sodium ions and chloride ions. I can make it go back into sodium and chlorine if I add electrons to the sodium and take electrons from the chlorine. Right? So ions. Electricity is just a total of electrons. It's moving electrons. Right. Electricity is moving electrons. Na plus one. Na plus chlorine. chlorine. Well, yeah. Uh, <coughs> That's what this would be if this was taking this solid and making it aqueous. But here I'm showing that we're taking this and we're making it into its element. We're taking an ionic compound and making it into its element. Chlorine. All right. Now, let's get into what I want to introduce to you today, a new kind of compound. We've learned a little bit about ionic compounds, and we'll talk about them again, ionic compounds, okay? Do ionic. There's another kind of compound that occurs when you combine not a metal and a non-metal, but two different kinds of non-metals. Two different kinds of non-metals. Now, we know one of those compounds. It's the most tasty compound in the world. Sugar. Mm, that's one also. I was thinking of this one. Water, right? Water is a combination of two what? Metals? Two non-metals? What? Non-metals. Two non-metals. Now, hydrogen is on the left side of the staircase, right? But I told you how that's the exception. It's the only exception. Right? It's the weird one. It's the weird one. It's a non-metal. You could even think about it that if it's, you would even think about it on the left side of the uh, staircase of six up, and then, because hydrogen is the tallest one. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but actually, there are times where hydrogen acts like a metal, a metal in terms of it takes a charge, like sodium. All right, but look at this. This is this an ionic compound here? No. How do you know it's not an ionic compound? It has no positive or negative charge. Because there's no metals. There's no metals. You can always tell an ionic compound because it has metals. But there's no metals here. So, this is a compound between non-metals. How in the world does this compound form? What? Here's the story. Right? Once upon a time, there was a handsome young hydrogen atom. And a sweet, sort of plump, but not unattractive, oxygen girl. All right? And they were telling each other sad, sad stories. What was oxygen's sad story? It needs one. Up. I was trying to get up with an iron. It, was try it needs sick. two more. I want to be noble, like the nobles. Do you remember the families of fancy people? Um, to be helium. Here they are. You Who are these fancy family that they all want to be like? I want to be helium, neon, argon, krypton. Right, this is the noble gases. Point it down to your neighbors so they know on the periodic table. Emma, get a couple of periodic tables for you guys. Point it out for your neighbors. Where is the noble gas line? On your neighbor's periodic table. Point it to your neighbor's periodic table. Is it the green? No. Point to your neighbor's periodic table. Ouch. Ouch. Point to your neighbors. And you have another neighbor over here. Those are the noble gases. And oxygen said, I can't be noble because I'm... What? Fat. No. <laughs> I, need I need two electrons. I need two electrons. Two electrons. Two electrons. So she's dreaming of two electrons, right? And helium, or hydrogen, sorry, says, Oh, well, I'm sorry. I don't think I can help because I what? 
I want an electron also, right? Is this how you make an E? So, hydrogen wants one electron, oxygen wants two electrons. Can they help each other out? No, hydrogen could give up his stuff. So, what happens is they get creative. They're standing around talking about their tough times, and in walks helium. He's so handsome, right? He's got his fancy hair curls and his fancy shield. Who's his crown? He doesn't have a crown. He's too small for a crown. Fancy shield and his shining sword of truth that the noble gas all are given, right? And helium says, oxygen, I see, <laughs> you don't have enough electrons, do you? And oxygen says, hey, give me one of your electrons really quick. And so hydrogen says, okay. And so hydrogen passes over an electron just for a moment. And oxygen says, I have an extra electron. And helium says, oh, okay. But you don't have two extra electrons. And oxygen says to hydrogen, Hey, give me another one of your electrons. I can't, I don't have any more. How many electrons does hydrogen have? One. One. And he, she says, get your friend over there to give me an electron. Okay. So hydrogen gives another electron to oxygen. And so when helium comes by, oxygen says, I have, you're sorry. Helium comes by, oxygen says, I have two electrons. Because it's borrowing them from who? Hydrogen. 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 Borrowing them from hydrogen. All right, there's electrons being donated from hydrogen to oxygen. About the same time, a little bit later, neon comes by. Neon Ooh, comes by this with is gonna be good. what? Uh, where is neon? <laughs> a crown. Okay, a crown. And his noble staff so... of loveliness. <laughs> okay. The royal neon comes by and says, Oh, hydrogen, I see that you don't have enough electrons. Oh, I'm so sorry. And hydrogen says, Oxygen, let me borrow one of your electrons. So oxygen gives back the electron that it had in the first place and then lends one more to hydrogen. And then hydrogen says, No, look, I have two electrons. I'm just as good as you are. And neon says, Oh, well, that's good, I guess. Okay? And the same thing with this hydrogen. It borrows the electron that it was initially had and gets one extra from oxygen. So every time someone comes to talk, they just pass them over. They share electrons back and forth, right? They basically just give back the electron. Oh, I see that. They're sharing electrons. And so they figure this out and they say, we can do this. It works. All we have to do is stay close. And when we're teased by the noble gases, we'll just move electrons around and we'll be happy, right? And so they form a group. A very stable one. A pretty stable group, yes. It's a three-headed. It's a three-headed, two oxygen, or one oxygen, and two hydrogens go around in a little group. Dada, we have, the, one. We have three. We have three words over here. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean, Tom? Tom? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. There are three unknowns there, right? So, we have this thing. Is this an ionic compound? No. Why isn't it an ionic compound? Because at the moment it's not sharing. So these ones... Because there's no charges here, right? Yeah. Nobody actually takes the electron completely from the other one. Right? Nobody takes the electron completely from the other one. Instead, they're doing what? Chemo They're sharing. They're sharing. Just the electrons just go back and forth and share. And this is called. Stable then. Oh, that's not. That doesn't mean you're unstable if you don't form a, a complete shift of the electrons. You can form a stable group this way, and this is why it's an important kind of molecule. Or a certain kind of compound. And they're called molecules, molecules or molecular compounds. So I introduced to you ionic compounds before. Ionic compounds are compounds where a metal and a non-metal come together, the electrons are transferred, and then their charges hold them together, right? Molecular compounds are formed 
when groups of atoms come together and find ways to what? Share. Share electron density. Does it have to be only non-metals? Yes. It couldn't be just two metals. That's right. So if I if I if I drew this, if I drew this N A C R O four. It couldn't be a metal because metals always want to lose. That's right. If I draw this thing right here, is this an ionic compound or a molecular compound? Ionic. Ionic molecular. compound. It has to be ionic because why? It has a metal. It has a metal. It has a metal. Okay. So now that's a complex ionic compound that we'll talk about later. But ionic compounds can always be recognized by them having a metal. What do we call the compounds that don't have metals? Molecular. Molecular compounds. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Play hard today. <laughs>